How to cousins? It's Rusty the reseller here. We got a really special video for you today. We're talking about a type of item that we sell a lot of and make a lot of good money from every year. It's in the paper ephemera category. We're talking about postcards. Now hold on a second. If you're thinking postcards are boring, I don't care about postcards, well just hold on a second. Did you know that postcards can sell for hundreds if not thousands of dollars? For one card? That's right. Did you know that they are readily available in a lot of areas to buy? That we buy them every week and sell them every week? We do. I'm going to teach you about things that have to do with postcards that cause them to have good values and things you should look for. I'm going to show you a lot of examples that we have here today that we plan on selling. I'm going to talk about that and maybe you can learn something. Do you care about history? Do you care about like really impressive photographic um, images? If any of these are true, this is a video for you. So without further ado, let's jump in here and check out some of these postcards. I'm highlighting this uh, over on the Postcard Planet uh, channel. My brother's got that one <clears throat> taken care of, but I just wanted to show you sometimes when you get old postcards in, and this can apply to any type of postcard, not just what I'm about to tell you about. Not only can it apply to postcards, but it applies to other small pieces of art. If you get a hold <clears throat> of some old um, etchings or engravings or artwork pieces that are on postcards or smaller items, sometimes the best way to sell that and to maximize your, your profit is to frame them. <clears throat> so let's say I get this lot of 10 items over here all for very cheap. Maybe in my case, for example, I've already sold stuff from the lot and made all my money back and now I have these. So you could try to sell these individually. They're interesting pieces of artwork. This is just an engraving um, and it has the artist's initials down here. <clears throat> but these are all postcards that you're looking at right here of different places in different uh, countries. Some of these, several of these actually are from France, different uh, you know, landmark buildings in Paris, for example. Others are from Germany. <clears throat> but what I did was I went out and I just spent, these are from Walmart. So they're, they're cheap, small frames. They cost me about a two and a half dollars a piece. And I went out and bought 10 and I framed these up. If I were just to sell this postcard by itself, I might not make more than $10. But I've, I've got no cost of goods in this anymore. I'll just spend an extra two and a half dollars, spend 30 seconds to put it in here. And now this is something that could sell for 20 to $25 and would be a nice gift for someone to give someone who had maybe come back from a trip to Paris or who knows what. I've got some other examples here too. And these, some of these are postcards. <clears throat> Others are just pieces of artwork that have been printed or um, pressed onto this paper. You can see this one not only is a piece of art, but the artist has signed it, hand signed it in pencil. And several of these are this way. We've got Rothenberg. Um, and you've got a, a, a names down here, Rothenberg. It's telling either the na the title of the piece or maybe where the piece is from. You can see I have two different variations of this one in two different colors. <clears throat> and then I have some other pieces that are all very similar. These have been mounted, in some cases stuck or mounted uh, onto a piece of paper. The paper itself is good for a, uh, like a five by seven okay frame, but the pieces themselves could fit in a four by six frame like this, and then this one is a three by five, uh, three and a half by five and a half. So just measure it, but it may make sense if you have some old pieces like this. This also works well for old trade cards, for old die cuts, 
um, maybe some old greeting cards that are interesting because of the content. Consider framing or even mat and getting a mat to put on these. And um, in my experience, you do a, it's easier to sell them that way because there's less work that the buyer has to do. And also, uh, it's an easy thing for people to buy as gifts because they're already framed. When they get it, it's easy for them to package on and just move uh, over and give as a gift to, to, to loved ones. Today, we're going to focus on a, uh, an item, a category of items that uh, we sell here regularly at the warehouse and that earn us a good amount of money. I don't know exactly how many are in here. My guess is around 100 postcards, and these are what are considered to be real photo postcards. And the reason for that is that these are uh, pictures that were taken on a land camera and were sent in to be uh, to for into a dark room someplace to be put onto uh, a, a a postcard, and these are made out of photo paper. Um, different manufacturers made the paper, and some of them, as you'll see, were made on a camera that was made to make an image that's the exact size of a postcard, whereas others were made with a different type of camera, and so the size of the negative is actually smaller than the size of the paper. And sometimes uh, they're uh, positioned off to one side, like this one, sometimes on the other side. Sometimes they even look, and I don't think I have, I may, but I don't think I have any of, uh, to uh, give you an example of today, but they would have used uh, a filter, not exactly a filter, uh, what would you call it? Almost like how you would put a mat around a picture, on, uh, only imagine that the mat was cut out in a shape so that the image looks like it is cut out into a shape. And they were really just doing that to block uh, the, uh, the, the image. And so as it was um, developed, only the, the image is only shown within the inside of the, uh, the, the sort of the mat that was put around it in a different shape. So all that to say, there are a variety of reasons why people buy and collect postcards, and more so than I'll even mention here. But in some cases, they collect them because of the interesting content of the picture. Maybe it's odd or unique. Maybe it's of a location or place that they took family vacations, things like that. So the content, the picture itself, oftentimes is a big reason why people collect Sometimes it's the message itself is interesting or uh, pe people care about the actual message that was sent. Sometimes it's the place it was going or coming from, or maybe it was to or from someone who is known or famous. Other times it's an obscure manufacturer. And the way that this says postcard and some of the information on the back oftentimes can tell you who the manufacturer was and the time period that it was made. People collect postcards from certain time periods, specific years, and also specific locations. And then sometimes the stamp that is on it, this one does not have one, it's unposted, but sometimes the stamp can be quite rare or unique. And even on top of that, the cancellation that would have been put on it when it was posted and sent, that cancellation could have come from a post office maybe that is no longer uh, around. Uh, it could have been uh, maybe uh, canceled while in transit from one uh, train depot to another. Those would be called RPOs. Um, I think it's like a railway postage or something like that. I can't remember what the acronym means, but there are the point is that there are lots of collectors out there, and the reasons why they collect them uh, can can cross uh, various different uh, reasons. I didn't explain that very well, but you get my point. There's lots of reasons why people might want these. Uh, every card I'm going to show you today, I have handpicked out because they're all real photo postcards, and also I believe, based on my research, that every one of these cards could command. On the low end, probably around $20 to the right buyer and up over $100, in some cases two or $300 that I believe I might be able to get from some of these images. So without further ado, let's get into this. This first one is a bunch of women. And from a distance, it doesn't seem like there's much going on other than a bunch of women together in a cornfield, which is sort of strange location. But if you look very, if you look even closer here, I'm going to try to zoom in here as I, I, I zoom in. You can see that these women, uh, it, something's going on here. Either this woman has a beard or misses a man with a beard 
Or, and you see over here too, they've put something to make it look like they've got, I don't know if this is a corn husk that they have put on here to make it look like they've got a beard, but these ladies, they know what's going on. They think it's quite funny. So they're in a cornfield behind a big corn stack here. You can see it's been, it's been harvested, but these women are just being silly and goofy. And I love to see that when these old cards, because oftentimes these old cards just involve people making, uh, you know, frowny faces and things. But this is definitely kind of a cool piece and sort of bizarre when you look up close. This postcard is unique because what you're seeing here is, and this says on the back, camera with two men. And that's absolutely right. Let me zoom in here. You can see that there is a land camera sat on a tripod and two men, one is holding the other one up upside down to achieve some sort of photograph out in this field no one else around, it seems like, but these guys are just horsing around, taking some, some bizarre photos of each other. They're using a camera, not unlike the camera that was likely used to take this photograph. So clearly there was someone else there. They took a photograph of these men taking a photograph of themselves. It's kind of a meta situation here, but I just love pe seeing these people be goobers. And sort of along the same lines, this I just think is a very uh, beautiful kind of uh, tranquil uh, scene here of a man out just photographing nature. Again, he's holding a land camera. He's looking down. This is most likely what they would consider a medium format, meaning the film is not super large. It's not super small either, but it would be more of a medium size, probably like a six by six image or maybe a little bit larger. And he's just standing on a rock by a little creek, a little stream, taking a photograph of something to send to somebody else. This is an interesting photo of a man with a long beard. And what's cool about it, I think, other than just the fact that you're seeing this old man, is that if you zoom in and you look right up close here, see if I can zoom, you're going to see on the wall behind him this leaflet that says the... Bakery and Confectionery Workers International Union of America. And this is with some sort of advertisement or something like that for the Confectionery International Union of America. I don't know anything about that, but that was some sort of an organization. And you can see that represented here. One of my favorite things about looking at these real photo postcards is to see the little Easter eggs, these little things that are hidden in the background or that maybe are not the focal point of the picture itself. Here we have several gentlemen uh, sitting here together taking a photo, and they've got this very bizarre sort of uh, setup here. The backdrop looks as though they're out in an encampment, or maybe there's some sort of a what's made to look like a Native American teepee with a hand-painted things on it, like a hatchet, and then what appears to be a horse that a man is sitting on. Now, is this a real horse or is this something set up in a studio? My guess is it's not a real horse. It's set up in a studio and uh, been made to look like they're outside. And uh, you just got a bunch of gentlemen with these hats, one man with his hand on a shoulder. Not sure what this is for, but again, it's unposted. I got a few of these cards I'm going to show today where people are dressed up. And in this case, again, I don't know for sure because it doesn't say, but it looks as though they're dressed up for an Independence Day, perhaps an Independence Day or Fourth of July uh, celebration. Maybe this is a reenactment of the Revolutionary War. Maybe it's the Civil War. My guess is Revolutionary War, but you can see he's dressed up almost maybe like Uncle Sam. Uh, you've got someone who's got paint all over their face here. Um, and women dressed up in all of this traditional, uh, these traditional uh, dresses with bonnets and their hair done up. This man looks like he's wearing some sort of like an English uh, derivation of a, of a, of a, a military outfit. Uh, and these are all, this is probably a school. This is probably like maybe a high school uh, class. And they all dressed up. This one's a cool one of a man. Again, the image was taken on a smaller format camera than a four by six, but you can see this man is a hunter. He's got his single barrel shotgun and he is displaying all of these birds. I don't know if these are 
uh, what these are, if these are pheasants or if these are um, quail or what these are. But he's dressed up and he is displaying his day's uh what he what he has uh, shot for that day, probably going to be dinner. The next two are of the same girl. This is a girl who is on a bed. You can see the colorful uh, wallpaper and different things hung. I don't know if this is a bedroom, but then this is a close-up image of her laying. It's a sweet little girl. This could be one of two things, folks. This could be just simply a parent saying... Look at my daughter and look how sweet she looks when she's sleeping. Let's take a photo of it. Or it could be uh, the more macabre. This could be um, a photograph of a deceased child, which also people did take photos of people who were deceased, sometimes laying in a casket. Um, there are also photographs out there of men who were shot and killed, who were bank robbers or bandits. Uh, they would take photos of that, and they would send it out as postcards, if you can believe it. I've had this one for a little while. All of these are going to go up for sale this week. I waited till I had a good amount so that I could kind of list several items in the same category. But this is just a young woman. She's got a little beret in her hair. She's got a locket on her neck. She's got a little bracelet on her wrist. And then you've got this young boy in overalls standing on a box in front. And this is like some sort of a photograph. You've got this backdrop in the background. So this is in a studio or maybe a makeshift studio. Next up, we've got a, a family here out fishing. Got a man with some long, probably, uh, poles made of cane, possibly. And they're out by this river. Uh, and you can even see the young boy in the background there is holding up a fairly large fish. So they definitely have been out there already fishing and they've caught themselves a couple things. This postcard I think is fascinating. It's a window into a particular um, ceremony that many people do not know existed. In the Navy, when mi military men would cross the equator or the prime meridian, they would uh, have a ceremony where they would dress up and induct these people into a, a, a society of, of other men uh, or women who had done the same thing. And this says that it's the initiation of landlubbers crossing the equator on board the USS Delaware while cruising on his royal domain bound for Valparaiso, Chile by Neptunus Rex and his trusty shellbacks. So a shellback is somebody who would have crossed, I believe, the equator and uh, and maybe come back across it as well. Uh, a ruler of the rage and main and solemn mysteries of the deep. This is dated February 10th, 1911. It gives the exact latitude and longitude of where they were at when this photograph was taken. And look closely, folks, at these outfits. Look at this. I find it absolutely fascinating as a piece of history. This is one of those types of cards that could command $50, $100, depending on who the buyer is. I just absolutely love it. That's not the only card that I have commemorating that event either. I've got others as well as some old photographs that are not postcards. This is a cool shot because of just really the color. This is taken at night in Los Angeles in 1916, and clearly you're looking at a float that uh, is in some sort of parade. Now, I don't know if these were lights or if these were just made to be reflective, but you can see they certainly are reflective, and you've got women in dresses sitting on what appear to be ostriches up on this float. Really cool looking. You've got some women back here as well. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least eleven women in this shot. Very cool shot. Sports postcards. If you look up postcard and you look up the highest value ones that have sold, you're going to likely find many sports related postcards. Baseball, football, basketball. Here is a photo of a, of a, of a team. It looks like this is maybe September of 1910. I believe is that the 0910 is. RAC is probably initials for the school or the team itself. These young men on a basketball team, a coach, maybe a couple coaches up here, uh, a couple coaches and five men. 
young men. Basketball, and it says uh, Leanne, Leanne of Ralph's team. Team of Ralph's. So Ralph is in here somewhere, probably, and he was on that team. Here's a really cool aerial, what they call an aerial view, or a bird's eye view, of Paris. And this is taken, I guess, I was told by someone else, from the vantage point of the Eiffel Tower. So somebody climbed up or was hoisted up or went up an elevator in the Eiffel Tower and then took this photograph of the city of Paris. People who like foreign cards, aerial views of cities would appreciate this, especially considering the fact that the city does not look like this anymore. Lots has been built. Things have been taken down. And so that's also a cool piece of history. Here is another one of those cards I was telling you about from that same uh, ceremony that the Navy uh, had. Very, very cool people walking on deck. You're still seeing them from behind, mostly, but you're seeing that they're dressed up in these uniforms. Here's another one of the Navy, and I really like this card because of its composition. This is clearly uh, not something that was staged. Probably someone just said, hey, turn around, I'm taking a photo. And whatever these guys were doing, they turned around real fast. In the background, you have men by a flagpole. This is probably on a warship. Men, Navy, one man's taking a toke on a cigarette, and another man in the, in the, um, here in the front turned it around. I just think it's a really cool shot, uh, of, of kind of that, that uh, group of people and what they were doing at that time. Here's one that has been manipulated. It is a combination, I would say, of real photographs put together to, um, to sort of trick the viewer into believing something that's not real. Not unlike how AI does with photographs today. The Land of Big Corn. 1909, they're making it seem like their corn was so large and grew so high that it grew up above the size of a barn. And you got men here, and man, they're just doing their best to try to harvest this stuff. It's so large, one ear of corn is the size of a cow, if you can believe it. You can't believe it, folks, because it's not real. That's a trick that they did in the dark room where they combined a couple of different separate images and put them together. That's what they would call an exaggerated postcard. Here's a really cool one of a family of people all having several different drinks. Everyone except for the kids seem to have a drink in their hand, drinking alcohol, toasting outside on the porch of somebody's home. Here's one of some kids probably home from school. It's a, it was a snowstorm. Look how high up the snow is. And this young lad's got a snowball and he is ready to, to, to hit anyone who gets too close. This is a fun one of a man with a big bag on his head. Uh, why? Eh, just to be goofy, I suppose. They're walking out. Maybe they're going camping. Who knows? This is a sweet little photo of a couple of twin girls holding uh, little uh, dolls, ceramic head dolls. And uh, they both, like, one looks kind of unhappy. The other one is, is trying to make a smile. I can just imagine the parents and giving the directions as to, hey, we're taking this photo. No, smile. Honey, look at the camera. Look at the over here. <laughs> uh, I love it. Little kiddos. June or August of 1911. And this one was going to Grandma. You know, this is Edna and Dorothy uh, all right here. Uh, and their little sweet baby dolls. This right here, folks, is what you're seeing as like a distant view of... Um, essentially a fireman's demonstration. So we got a bunch of people. This might have been a parade. This might have been an event, but you have a fireman over here and he is shooting a large blast of water from a fire hose. I know this because I had another card that came in the same lot and it was a closer up photo of the fireman with the hose. And so I knew what that was. A very cool little scene. I don't think that they do those anymore, demonstrations like that, although I might be wrong. Here's another image of a, a group of, of men and women, potentially women, I don't know, I think it's mostly men, having some drinks. This is Prohibition era, folks. Uh, I don't know if this is before Prohibition or directly after or during, but either way, people are having some libations and it looks as though they're having a pretty good time with it. I love this photo because it's a, a really good representation of just sort of rural life and hard work, you know, blue collar work. You got some men here on some sort of um, 
you know, a harvesting machine or some sort of piece, of heavy piece of equipment that they would use in the fields, a man with a shovel, and they're all sitting there taking a break, posing uh, right here. I just, it's interesting to see their clothing. It's interesting to see, like, this was an important thing to take photo of. Um, and so one of the men jumped out and got a quick snapshot. It says Moser and Son. And this is from Cincinnati, Ohio. We don't know the date, but this is in the teens. This one hails from near where I live. This is an aerial view of Cherokee, North Carolina. And Cherokee uh, is, on an, is on a Native American uh, reservation. Um, so they have, you know, sort of control of that, of that area, their families. And uh, this is an uh, entrance to the Great Smoky Mountain uh, National Park. And so... This is on one particular side, and this is down toward, toward the border of Tennessee and North Carolina in the west. Uh, and I'm sure it's way more developed than this now. And you can see this has been removed. It was once adhered with glue to a black piece of paper in a scrapbook or a photo album and has been subsequently pulled out. This is an awesome shot. The, the depth, the color, this was uh, whoever took this photograph was an expert at knowing exactly how long to expose uh, the the image, because and, and or whoever did this in the dark room, it's an absolutely an an impressive uh, as far as the depth. Um, and you can see, I mean, if you zoom in really close, you can read on there two hundred. Keep out, keep off. You've got some men off the side there. Awesome shot of a train, of the engine of a train straight on, and you've got people waiting to board and or disembarking on the right side there. Where was this taken? I'm not exactly sure. I would need to look. But it was sent to someone in North Carolina in 1916. The next shot, again, is a sports photograph. I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see these men. And it says Homer, I believe, on his shirt. But this is a really cool old setup uh, as far as um, outfits for a baseball team, you got uh, some men with their hats, their baseball outfits on, a bat, and they're standing on uh, some sort of main street. You got the feed sales table in the back on the wall. You got George something, some sort of business on that side. And then here you've got another uh, spot, maybe a bank or something like that on the other side. Again, this was taken with a, that could only do maybe a three by five image, right? Uh, or, or less. And then it was stuck on this size postcard. Oh boy, natural disasters. These things can bring big values, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes. And in this case, it's a hotel fire in 1913. Um, this is an interesting shot. You can see that it is burning on the top. You can see it's currently being burned. And you can see all these people outside. And they have pulled out as much furniture and personal items and goods. Beds, dressers, as much as they could get out, they pulled out. You can see right here on the side, you've got like a sewing machine. You've got some, some cots. People walking on the back side. It looks like maybe that's just smoke bellowing out. And on the far right, you see... Uh-oh, there's snow on the ground. It's cold out there, folks. The house is, uh, hotel is burning. All those people are out now. They got no place to stay, and they pulled all this stuff out so it didn't go down up in flames also. Devastating situation, but I have no idea when or where it took place. This one is a very unique one, and I'm going to go out on a limb here. If you if you have another idea, please let me know. But what I believe is happening here, folks, is that this man sitting in this chair is deceased. I believe that this man died, and these people all gathered around behind him to have their photograph taken with him still sitting in that chair. Did he die in the chair, or did they bring him outside and put him in the chair? That kind of thing happened, believe it or not. Pa died. Folks, let's all get around here, take a photograph, the last photograph with Pa, and uh, we're all just sort of standing around. I am very doubtful that this man is just sitting there asleep. Um, I think it would be, un, it would be, uh, it's hard for me to believe that he would not hear the commotion of people getting together and standing there and getting directions. Okay, the, the, we're about to take the shot. 
it's possible that that's it. Um, you know, there is one man sort of smiling there, but you don't necessarily know. I believe that this is a, a photograph of a dead man and family or friends standing around. A very bizarre shot. But it's not that uncommon. You, like I said, you will find shots of people who are who have passed on. Here is another natural disaster postcard. Um, this was uh, the uh, looks like the aftermath. This is the night after the fire. And this is the full view of the fire. Um, and it says twelve oh seven, so maybe December of of nineteen oh seven. Yes, well, this is taken. This uh, was postmarked in March, so maybe it was before. But uh, Plymouth, Ohio, was where this was going. It had to have been 1907 or earlier, because after that, uh, a little bit after that, they started putting a divided line here and allowing people to put messages as well as where it was being sent to. But before the earlier ones, they really just had a space for you to put where it was going. But this was the aftermath of a fire that looks like it took out buildings on both sides of this road. Here you have the straight on view of a department store. And I think this is fascinating from a design perspective, as well as seeing the products that were for sale. This looks like some sort of haberdashery. Uh, yeah, well, it says right here, Johnson the Taylor and haberdasher. So we're looking at uh, clothing. We're looking at hats. Uh, we're looking at other things in here. I love this, this little mannequin with a face, a painted face. He's got a, a suit jacket, a shirt, and a little, t a little, um, flat bill hat up there at the top. Such a cool shot. This is from 1910 and it was going out to, to, to Edith and Jackson, uh, I guess Michigan. This right here is a funeral procession, folks, that happened in a, 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 a um, military encampment in North Carolina. And you can see you can see some barracks and some buildings in the back, but you can see we have a casket here, a couple of multiple caskets. We've got one up here, one there, and one here. At the very least, there's three. There may be more up there. You see men in military regalia walking up there in front of this procession. And you got the flag. So these are these are men or women who uh, died uh, during World War One. It says Wyatt Church picture for more. So they were uh, taking it from a church, but this is at a military encampment. This is such a cool shot. I, so much is going on here. First of all, we've got this young lad here standing. We've got this man with a very very old bicycle. We have a child feeding a gigantic uh, goose and then this cool building in the back and look up above here what's that why that is a gun on a rack of antlers so antlers were attached to the outside upper part of a building and somebody put their gun up so high you'd have to get onto something to even reach up there and get it i didn't even know that they did that i thought that they kept their weapons on the inside of the house but I guess not here. So such a strange combination of events happening all at the same time. I, f I find that oddity uh, very, very fascinating. Here's a cool shot of uh, an area where there are some homes, but not all that populated. And it looks like men or, or children sledding, bobsledding. They're walking up the ramp way up here. They're jumping on their bobsled or their sled, and they're coming all the way, whoosh, all the way down here to the bottom. This is going to Boston, Massachusetts, and it says, no more skating. <laughs> maybe that was the last one of the day. And this is looking like 1912, maybe. Very cool shot. Probably someplace up north. Here's a shot of an encampment here. Camp of the 417th Squadron, USA. Wheeler, and Wheeler may be the person that took the photograph, or Wheeler may be the person that developed it. Here it says something September in Washington is where this took place at, it looks like. Here's another one, a military one, where a man has this gigantic uh, thing that he's blowing into, or maybe it's a megaphone is probably what it is. Actually, you know, it is a megaphone, but he's got a horn, and he's blowing into that to um, 
you know, um, make the sound louder to go farther. And then this is something that would have been scribbled in during the um, darkroom process of, of doing this is that you've got the image and then this person is writing stuff on here. Help, help, uh, get your gun. I wonder who, uh, who wakes him up. I sure hate him. The guy that makes us all get up. And so here's the guy who's telling him, he's blowing the horn saying, get up, it's time to go to, it's time to go back to battle. We hate that guy. It's just his job, folks. 1933, Milwaukee. It's a cool shot. Okay, so here are three separate images. We're going to do these in sequence. We've got these men right here. And they are sitting around a table, eating food, eating crackers, maybe having a beverage or two, sucking on a, a, a pipe, smoking some tobacco. Then we got these same gentlemen reaching their hands out, uh, offering, I don't know, they got their bags and they're, they're, they're shaking hands for some reason. And then why not? Let's just, you know, let's just show our athleticism here. Let's climb up on each other's shoulders and, uh, and do a little shot like that. Like, look, look what we can do. Uh, fascinating. They're all in the same spot in front of the same building, as you can see, and it's the same gentleman. So those, if I were to sell, for example, I'd sell those all in a lot because they're the same people in the same spot doing different things. And this is uh, on the, uh, the deck of the USS Pennsylvania, and you're looking at one of the giant turrets here in the center of the warship, and you can see the big uh, reflective lights up here, and uh, and just men going about their business, doing their job, their work up here on the USS Pennsylvania. This is an example of one of those lights. It says PA Pennsylvania powerful searchlight. So this light right here, it's a close up of this light, and it would have been one of these, most likely, or perhaps on the turret that a person is standing on to take this photo. They might have just turned right around, and it's right there behind them. Those also probably would go together. Same same topic, same ship. Um, really cool. And speaking of which, we're still here during the World War I era, probably even before that. This is probably the teens. And this is the Knights of Columbus in Panama, the country of Panama. Welcome, soldiers and sailors. So these are naval men from the United States who came over on a warship who have docked here at the Panama Canal area. And the Knights of People, the, the fine people of the Knights of Columbus were ready for them to host them. And man, they're all out here chatting up, doing this and that. Just a few more here today. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these. So I've gone through about half of them. I'll go through a few more, and then we'll save the rest of these for one of the next videos in the next couple of weeks. But I've got a couple more here today. We've got this one of a gentleman who is down inside of one of the cannons on a warship. Now, I don't know if this was a, a, um, a darkroom trick or if he legitimately got himself down in this to pose for a picture. But it's the muzzle of a 14-inch gun. So um, I would assume that he's not actually in there because 14 inches is not is still not wide enough for a human being to get in. But it's, it's interesting. This is a naval uh, a man in the teens posing like he's inside the gun of this warship. Speaking of warships, we got a ship and the scene here says ice on the life rafts of the U.S. warship. So this is from a lot I got. Uh, th th this is dated 1921, and this ship was coming back from France to the United States. It's the USS Pennsylvania again. This was going out to Wisconsin, uh, and um, this, uh, during their journey, I don't know what time of year it was, but wherever they went, water splashed up, and the, cold, and, the, and the air was so cold that it froze the guns on the ship. It froze these life rafts, and it, you can see a gun back here and a man standing there in the background. Um, that's crazy. It's a good thing they didn't need these, because how, how would you get those out and use them in the event that you needed them in a situation like that? I don't know. Here's a U.S. Navy seaplane. It's really cool if you if you zoom in here you can read 
that that is city of Los Angeles pier number one. So you've got this this uh, seaplane of the number nine on it, and this is a, a pier in Los Angeles that that was at originally a military plane. I'm going to end I think today with this postcard. This is one that I would say probably could command a hundred or two hundred dollars. It is such a rare uh, uh, scene. It's of a naval man uh, on a ship getting ready to go down uh, underwater in what appears to be a very, very old version of a diving suit. And you've got this huge metal helmet contraption on. You've got the air hose stuck to the side there. This is all over his shoulders. That has to weigh several pounds, probably 30 or 40 pounds or more. He's got the glass part open so he can see right now, but he's fixing to go into the water. He's climbing over the side of this ship, and you got a couple men on the side helping him here. Very unique, very interesting, and it says USN Diver, United States Naval Navy Diver. He's getting ready to go down. Very, very cool shot. Um, I've held on to this for a while. Uh, I just wanted to share it with you. I think it's really cool. Folks, these types of postcards have really good values. I like to buy lots, um, and I will sort through and find the really high-value ones and pull those out to sell individually. Meanwhile, I'll sell the others in either small lots or individually like this. I hope you learned something today, folks. Keep an eye out for these. I love me some old postcards. The history is just absolutely fascinating. And uh, if you're a lover of photography, you can also really get into these. Take care, folks. Good luck on your treasure hunt. I have about 1,600 more postcards coming in today that I'm going to get to sort through. So maybe I'll have some more to add to these others for the next video on postcards that we do. If you haven't gone over here yet, please check out our channel called Postcard Planet. That channel is all about postcards. Take care. Let's go find some treasures. Rusty. 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 Rusty.